So, Jesus Christ. First of all, look at these. Look at these bad boys. Um, got them just to, you know, spice up the, the background, you know, make it look nice. This one's just a Rick and Morty poster because it's red. And then this one, you know, I'm actually going to go up. You know, we've got, we got Alisson, we've got all these players, but the one player we don't have is Lalana. I'm sorry, Adam. Sorry, man. I've been a big critic of you, but today you helped us. You know, if you want the new sign-in, the new sign-in, Adam Lalana has actually done it. But anyway, let me know if you like the background. I think it looks quite nice. It looks a bit better um, than just a red Liverpool t-shirt just there. But um, anyway, let's get into the game because it ended Liverpool. What well, I should say, Manchester United one, Liverpool one. Now, my opinions on the game. So, that's what we're going to do first. First of all, for first off, we were pretty bad. Uh, I thought our passing was awful. Um, we had a few chances. I thought Genie was alright. He had a few times when he was dribbling. And United itself was quite simple. Five at the back, and then counter-attack. But yeah, we had a few chances. There was one with uh, Sadio Mane on the right-hand side. Firmino should have done a bit better with the shot. Just wasn't enough power on it to, you know, if it was a bit more power, maybe might have forced to save a Rigi, could have got the rebound. And then there was one with Genie where he just drove down the middle, got a good shot off, straight at the keeper. Then United had a few chances as well, not really. They had one with McTominay, went down the middle, Fabinho was nowhere to be seen, so it was just to isolate. You know, the guy had, McTominay had loads of space, took a shot down the middle, nothing much to do. But then, yeah, um, but actually, let me go with the lineup first, because... Going into the game, I thought Salah was actually fit. And Shakiri. So when I hear five minutes before the lineup was getting announced that Salah has not travelled with the squad and Shakiri's not playing either, ah, not the best. I had a feeling that it would be a Rigi left, Mane right, and then Firmino in the middle. Great. Um, preferably a Rigi down the middle and then have like a um, Salah or Mane. But, you know. If all if they were all playing, then it would we wouldn't have to play Rigi. Um, but yeah, we went there. Not the you know we didn't have Salah, which I know he tends to ghost in these games, but I think he probably would. It would have been a bit better. Would have brought a bit more pace, a bit more counter attack and play. And yeah, but um, I did feel as well. Again, could have been a good game for Kale to play with because we already knew what United you know, were going to do. Drop deep and hit us on the counter and. When teams drop deep, an Ox or a KO would have been perfect for today. You know, because the midfield is a very work man midfield. And if we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe against someone, it's perfect. But if we're playing against a low block side, we could have played, you know, a 4 3 one which we did end up playing later. But anyway, so we go into the game. I mentioned the chances that we already have, that I've mentioned before. And then controversy happens. So, first thing that happens, Robertson plays the ball into Origi. Origi does a very heavy touch. But it's a foul. I people maybe that's me being biased, but personally I thought it was a foul. And you know, some people I talked at half time and people said, Oh no, it wasn't a foul, it was a dive. It wasn't a dive. Because Lindelof does get a Rigi, so but it was a foul, it was in the middle of the park, and then albeit very good goal because Daniel James was a brilliant cross and then Rashford who up, you know. He's known to me as Trashford, but he did well today. He scored a good goal and, you know, he played all right. Um, but yeah, scores a goal. But personally, I thought it was a foul. And this is a problem that I have with VAR. There's the thing about clear and obvious and also whether it's a foul or not. Is it a foul? Yes. Um, but then, you know, it's not clear and obvious, but it is a foul. But then you go to the next phase, which I'll talk about later. But... The problem I have with VAR at the moment is its inconsistency. Um, but anyway, because yesterday in the Leicester game, don't know if you saw it, but um, Johnny Evans gets fouled. There was probably less contact in that than in the game today at United, but then the goal gets disallowed instead of allowed, and that's the problem. I know referees are supposed to have different ideas and all of that, but the rules are the rules. If it's a foul, it's a foul. If it's not, it's not. <laughs> Um, no matter how much contact there is or not, if if he gets absolutely twatted, it's still a foul as if he doesn't, you know, he touches him a little bit. So, 
that's the problem I have with that goal. Personally, I thought the goal should have been disallowed. Now, going into the next thing, it was about, it was about 36 minutes in, United 1 0 up. And then we get um, Fabinho, I think, does a beautiful ball over the top into Sadio Mane. And um, yeah, Mane um, handles it. I mean, when I first watched it, I thought it was a good, brilliant goal. He managed to bring it down, go across, I think it was Lindelof, and then score. Brilliant goal. I was celebrating. I don't know if I'm going to have any of my reaction videos you know, somewhere here, because I was going crazy, um, but yeah, I was celebrating, I thought, yes, it's a goal, we're back at it, you know, just before halftime, it was great, and then the VR check, check came in, when I watched it, I thought, he hit with the style, and it hit his hand, so I thought it wasn't a handball, because his hand was in the natural position, it shouldn't be a handball, I looked at it again after the match, um, I was actually did a post-match reaction already, but I thought there was a few points that I hadn't made, so I'm doing it again, but I had a look at it again, and I think it was humble, personally. I think he, he doesn't hit his thigh, then his hand, it just hits his hand directly. But if I was to be a biased devil's advocate, which isn't a devil's advocate, uh, personally, he does get a tad bit manhandled from Lindelof. But anyway, I'm not annoyed with that decision, um, because it was humble at the end of the day. But there's that as well. Um, but anyway... You know, God doesn't get this. It doesn't get allowed. But yeah, I thought overall we were quite poor in the first half. I thought the midfield, Henderson didn't offer much. Trent didn't even offer that much either on the on the right back position. Um, and I don't think our fullbacks had that much. Um, didn't didn't really couldn't really do much. Um, I think again, it's a formation that we played a lot when we played against low block sides, and it was a four two three one today. That would have been perfect. Which. We do end up, going into the second half, we do end up reverting to a 4-2-3-1. I thought Henderson should have been taken off. He's carried on playing. He was playing. It was really weird. So we had, we played a 4-2-3-1, back four the same. DM was Genie Vijnaldum and Fabinho. And then on the right-hand side was Henderson. Which, I don't know whether that's because he can cross the ball better maybe than Genie Vijnaldum. But I still thought that was a bit of a weird decision. Because he's not as athletic as Genie. He doesn't provide as much going forward as Genie. And, you know, you know, I understand Genie's quite a decent all-round midfielder, but I thought he would have been better, you know, further up the pitch. We see how he plays for Holland. He's a bit better further up the pitch. Um, but, yeah, so I was a bit perplexed about that, um, I thought. But then the substitutions come in. And, um, you know, the 43 one's great, but if we had a Mo or a Shaqiri, it would have been perfect. You know, we'd have probably played Firmino in the 10, Shaqiri on the right. Mane on the left and then Origi up top. Um, would have allowed Trent and Robert to make the crosses in, but you can't really do much with injuries. Um, but anyway, going into it, um, we then Klopp decides to make a few substitutions. Well, he made one, which was baffling, if I'm being honest. Um, he brings, takes off Divokuri. I saw Ox come on and I was like, yes, we're getting driving runs from midfield. He's, um, Henderson's not going to be on the right-hand side anymore. It's going to be great. I thought Henderson was going to come off because I was calling for Ox or Keita to come on. You know, driving runs from midfield or whatever. And then um, Origi comes off. And I was like, I'm not sure about that. I don't think that's the right decision because um, Origi, notorious for last minute goals. You know, he's always a player that he can come up in clutch moments. And then um, we had... And then the fact that Henderson is still playing on the right-hand side just baffled me. But yeah, Ox came on, played well. Honestly, worked his socks off, played well, tried to create stuff. I really liked how he played today. Um, and then uh, I was then calling for Kato to come on. Maybe to play, you know, as a midfielder on the, and then play on the right-hand. You know, maybe revert um, the Ox onto the right-hand side and then maybe play, I don't know. But um, just play around those three, um, you know, three roles behind the striker. And then he last saw Lalana woman up. And I was like, for God's sake. I'm sorry, Lalana, you're not there. See, that was kind of the vibe that I was going for as well. You know, he was not there. You know, he hasn't done much, you know, for us. I mean, he played all right for the against MK Dons, but that's MK Dons. But yeah, um, he, I was just like, oh, God. 
Oh god, it's happening again. This is going back to what always happens against United. They get cheese and we're gonna suffer from it. Um we haven't got enough players from the bench to provide something and Lalana comes in and I was like, How the hell is Kater not playing? How the hell is Kater not playing? Then he goes to like the seventy year flip and you start to notice United drop a bit deeper. Lalana came on, looked lively, was looking good. But as the game started to go on, United started to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it plays into our hands. I'm so Ole, man, you did a good job to get the result, but you played it into our hands. You decided to try and be safe, and you ended up playing it into our hands because you going narrow, dropping back. I mean, it's easy. All that's doing is just providing width for our fullbacks, and our midfield is not very creative. But the thing that creates that provides the creativity, which is kind of like a substitute, are our fullbacks. And the first 70 minutes, you guys did great to nullify that. But then you went narrow and then you decided to drop back. That just gives them more space. I'm, you know, and when that happened, I was like, yeah, we're going to get a goal. And simple as that. I was watching the game and I was like, yeah, we're going to get a goal. I mean, eventually, these crosses, one of them's going to end up, one of them's going to end up sticking. And... And then we bring on Kato, and then that was the last substitution. And I knew then that we were gonna take off. Um, we were gonna take off Genie. I, I thought we were also gonna take off Lalana for Hendo, which is a bit better because Lalana, even though he's not too good, but you know he's not the best. But you know his ability is there. It's just his match form isn't. Um, but then you know you knew that he was gonna be a bit more athletic, provide a bit more in attack than Henderson. So I thought that that's you know either Kato or you know one, Henderson should have come off sooner essentially. Um, but then, yeah, so we, um, but yeah, I understood Klopp's understanding, but I felt that Origi should have stood, been in the pitch for a bit longer, because even though he wasn't playing too well, I feel like he would have provided more than Henderson in, you know, on the right-hand side. Um, but yeah, so we go in, it's about 78 minutes in, you know, I was looking at Keita, who, if you guys don't know, I am a big fan of, I still think he's got a lot to provide for this club, um, but then, yeah, he, you, you saw him on the ball and he was... Looking for the ball, he was actually trying to make things happen, which didn't look like from the midfield before. You know, he wasn't, he looked more proactive, it's probably the best way I can describe it. He looked a bit more proactive, looked on the ball, was trying to make the passes here and there. And then, when I was saying about the crosses, that one of them was going to stick, one of them was going to stick. K gets the ball from the left hand side, plays it into Robbo, and then it's a typical Liverpool goal. Um, people will say, oh, you know, I've heard people say it was a poor cross or whatever, but. You know, I wasn't actually able to fully analyse the goal at the time because I was just in euphoria. I was happy, you know, we're still, we're back in the game and all of that. But then we had, so if you look at it, Kea plays it into Robertson. Robertson then does a, it was a low cross, which he doesn't normally do, you know, sometimes he does, but it's a really weird cross, especially, you know, it was a low cross because every single time it felt like the cross that the hail was going to pick up, he played quite well today. Um, but... He crossed it in, and then Firmino, who didn't play well today, by the way, um, but Firmino managed to do a little dummy, which does put Lindelof, I think it was Lindelof in the front post, does manage to put him off guard. And that little dummy there, if that wasn't done, then that goal's not going in. Simple as, because that dummy then just puts the full, the, all the, the whole defence, if you look at the goal again, the defence just doesn't know what it's meant to do. And then Lilano's going back post. Rojo doesn't know what to do. He's the one closest to the ball. Can't react to it. And then Lilano has an easy goal. And again, I don't have Lilano here. So yeah, I'm just going to say he's a new signing. Because this is the 2018-19 poster. So yeah, the reason is, it's because he's a new signing. We all know, well, everybody in Liverpool Twitter knows what I'm on about. Uh, but yeah, so managed to get the goal. And I felt like we could have got another goal. I felt like... We were much better. There was a brilliant chance there from Ox. He had a few shots. There was one that was quite wide. Then he had one with his left foot. I mean, I haven't hit, seen him hit the ball with his left foot like that. But it just went a little bit wide. We kept on mind on the pressure. Mind on the pressure. You know, when he got to there, and United were just pegged back. They had, I think, one corner, but nothing really happened of it. But then it just kept on getting pegged back, pegged back, pegged back. And as I said, if Klopp's substitutions were a bit sooner, I felt like... That could have happened a bit sooner as well because we pegged them back. And when we peg teams back, if we give them 10, 15 minutes of them getting pegged back, pegged back, especially when it's level, then 
I think it would have been a different result. But um, but yeah, I wasn't happy at the substitutions at the time. But again, Klopp always being the smartest man in the room, it feels like. Um, don't think we played well. But again, it's a sign of good teams if we don't play well and we still manage to get a point. You know, that is a sign, you know, getting the points here and there when things aren't going well and then sometimes managing to get a win, that's what we need to do. And, you know, it's different than when we played Leicester or West Ham last season because we were in winning situations, even Arsenal, because we were in winning situations and we managed to let, you know, let the lead go. But this one, we were backs against the wall, 10, 15 minutes to go. This was, if this was a Liverpool from four years ago, five years ago, even six years ago, when we were scoring goals left, right and centre, this that was that team, would not have got a result today. Or it would have been very unlikely. But this Liverpool team, time and time again, know when to get the goals in the, in the moments when it counts. And Klopp said mentality giants, and you can't dispute that. I'm sorry, you can't, because the amount of times this has happened, when you've been pegged back or whatever, we still managed to get back. But, you know, we need to do the player ratings. Alisson comes back from injury, first game since August. August, like mid-August. So that is two months now. Looks all right. There was a few times he looked a bit shaky and all of that, but overall didn't have much to do, but looked all right. So I'd probably just say six and a half out of ten. Um, right back Trent wasn't his best game. Um, I felt first half United did well to kind of nullify the fullback area. Um, and then even still his delivery. I thought defensively was a bit better today. Um, and then, but offensively he wasn't that good. Then you go with um, the centre-backs, John Matip and Van Dijk. Oh yeah, Van Dijk got outmuscled by Rashford. But um, still, again, Rashford played well, but he didn't get that much of a sniff. He got the goal, which was a great cross from Daniel James, by the way. Um, and then, yeah. Um, then, Matip again. It's good, 7 out of 10. Left-back, Robertson. Now, first half didn't have much to do, but then second half... He managed to get... He, he played better. So I'll probably say 7.5 out of 10. Fabinho did well for the ball, into for the disallowed goal. But again, I felt like it was much better in the 4-2-3-1. I felt more comfortable. Um, I don't feel like the 4-3-3 was a game for him today. Um, but again, played well. So again, 7 out of 10. Maybe I'm being a bit generous. Same with Genie Vijnaldum. I'll probably say again, another 7 out of 10. Um... He didn't ghost really, he actually did a few dribbles here and there and all of that. So I thought he played well, but I felt like he could have been a bit, should have been put a bit further up in the pitch in the second half. Then um, Henderson, six, borderline 5.5. Um, don't think he played well, slowed down the game. Wasn't good on the right hand side, which isn't his fault, but again, uh, but yeah, I was happy when he went off. Um, then we have Firmino, he did well for the, for the goal. Um, and then he did, yeah, so, I, you know, there was a few times where his touch wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't on his A game today. So 6.5 out of 10, Mane looked dangerous at times, but again, relatively quiet. So again, 6.5, Origi, again, I'd probably say 6, it was a bit quiet here and there. I think our front three wasn't the best, and then we we'll go with Naby Keita. Uh Looks a bit lively, but again, didn't do too much to impact the game, but I feel like, which, by the way, sorry to plug, but I'm going to be doing a charity stream. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to leave any donations or watch the stream. It's on twitch.tv forward slash OJ Sam, same channel name as this. Um, it will be starting around 7 o'clock um, and then 12 hours, uh, 24 hour stream. I'm going to be absolutely knackered. Um, so I really appreciate if you guys watch it. And if you guys do donate, it is for Stand Up to Cancer. I will highly appreciate that as well. Um, but yeah, um, anyway. I went on a tangent there, but I do feel like Naby Keita and the Ox and or, you know, they should start. I think preferably Naby Keita should start. But Ox did play quite well. I did think he played quite well. So Naby Keita, I'll give him a six. Um, Ox, I actually say I'll give him a seven. And then uh, maybe 7.5 for Robertson, by the way. Yeah. So seven for, um, I'm being quite harsh with the 7.5 as well for Ox. I thought he was quite lively. And then Lalana. Thought again, he, he, you know, was good with the interplay and all of that. You know, he was getting the ball from deep and then sometimes going forward and then he managed to get the goal. So I'm actually going to go 
8 out of 10, which basically means he was our best player, but he wasn't at the same. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bias. But then, yeah, that was my opinion. I also have to give a um, a rating for the referee. Um, who, okay, personally, especially the first half, probably to like 70th minute, I feel like he was doing the bird box challenge. All the time, just having his blindfolds on, not seeing a thing, especially when it came to fouls that Liverpool received. I felt like he was, you know, Martin Atkinson was basically moving like Rowan Atkinson. He was a joker. He was Mr. Bean. He was an idiot. That was my personal opinion. United fans will probably be saying different, but I don't care. It's my review. I'm sorry about that. Maybe I'm sounding a bit cocky, but it is what it is. Um, I did think he didn't. For United fans, I'll probably say 10 out of 10, maybe 12 out of 10, because he was your top, top man. Personally, I'm not one to give my opinion, but that's my opinion. And then we have, um, but for us, it was 2 out of 10, I think. Even though it's said in the first half that we had three fouls, but I don't remember any of them. Um, I'm really, but I remember we there were so many times, there was one when Trent was on the right-hand side, referee doesn't give a foul, and then all of a sudden, Manny gets the ball in front of, Maguire and then apparently that's a foul on Maguire and all of that maybe that's my bias talking and my frustration but I felt the referee wasn't that good today uh, more towards Liverpool but I think overall he just wasn't good um, people may see that as an excuse no we didn't play well but again when the referee isn't on us on our side really and isn't on our side and we still managed to get a draw out of this to be honest I expected a draw, even though I put down my predictions 3-1, I part of me was like, it's probably going to be a draw, but I couldn't, couldn't say, I've always got to support my team. Um, but yeah, United is always a difficult place to go, um, but hopefully, I mean, for the neutral, it does make the Premier League a bit more exciting because City did win um, against uh, Crystal Palace. Christian Benteke, man, you should have scored. <laughs> uh, but, I mean... It does make the, that game on the 10th of November very interesting because we've got Spurs next. We've got a tough run of games, actually, to be honest. And then we've got City at home on the 10th of November. I'm thinking about maybe doing a live stream, live reactions to that. I'm not entirely sure. But that game is going to be important now. We're six points ahead now instead of eight. And if we've got to win it. We've got to win it. We've got to make sure, especially the way City are now, they've got a chink in their armour. They haven't got Laporte for ages. And... You know, we've got to try and get a win against them, you know. Especially that we're at home as well. We can't let them, you know, do exactly what they did last season. You know, as soon as if they get a win at the Etihad, they're not going to have so much confidence. But um, it does put a big, uh, it does put a big magnifying glass, a big scope on that game. Because if Liverpool had won, it probably wouldn't have been as big. But going the lead potentially going down to three points does make the Premier League a bit more exciting. But, um, yeah, that is the end of the video. If you guys, you know what? I'm going to leave a poll. Three polls I'm going to leave. One of them being, did you think the rash for goal should have been allowed? I don't know if it's any of these sides. Whatever side. I'm going to go for this side. If I'm wrong, then screw it. But did you think that Rashford's goal should have been allowed? Yes or no? Um, four questions, actually. Did you think the Mane goal should have been allowed? Yes or no. And then, um, do you think the referee had a good performance today? Um, and then finally, what's your opinions of VAR? Do you think it should be more consistent? You know, there should be more consistency with it. Do you think it should be abolished? Do you think it's a good thing? Or any other things, really. And then I'll leave another one saying other, and you can leave a comment down there in the comment section below. But anyway, it's your boy, Ojo Rai Sam here. I'm going to give you three seconds to subscribe. Three, two... One, bang, you better subscribe now, otherwise, don't know what you're doing. Um, leave a like if you like this video, even if you disagree with my opinions, you can always leave it down in the comment section below. If you still leave a like on the video, because it's my opinion, you guys might have different opinions, you may disagree with me, that's completely fine. Just feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. I'll try and reply, well, I probably will, because I haven't got really much to do. Um, but yeah, I'm also going to be doing the live stream, I'll probably do another a separate video regarding that. Um, but yeah, it's your boy. Ojo I Sam here and I hope you guys have a very nice day.